to be in such a state of despair, to feel so strongly, means to be filled with life. But as he writes in the book, not full of yourself in a bad way, but full of yourself as plenitude, as abundance of life. And to be in such a state of despair as he was when he was writing this book, he wrote it when he was 22 years old and published it when he was 24 or something like that. It was his first published book in Romania. I want to uh, explore this idea that this book is depressing. Indeed, it talks about a lot of sad subjects, but if you look with care, so to speak, you will see a lot of exclamation points, for instance, and that is the language of a lover, in a way. He writes in such a way that he loves life. You can see that even in his scream, there's a lot of, I, w I wouldn't know, I would not say joy, but a lot of, of, a lot of passion, a lot of desire for life. It's, he's so full of life that he, <laughs> he uh, makes uh, an analogy that he's like a balloon that grows beyond its capacity to inflate. Of, of course you can say he, he was a pessimist, yes. I, I think you can say that, but at the most profound place in his heart, it was sensuality and passion. First, he has the regret of not being a musician. He was also a big lover of music. There's even a book in Romanian where uh, editors took passages and passages that uh, he writes about music for him Bach was the justification of God for instance there's a book of like 100 and something pages in which he talks only about music Mozart Bach Beethoven and makes so wonderful analogies you can feel how sensitive he was uh, an insipid nihilist let's say would not have that uh, love of life that passion that openness to the world his uh, musicality is all over that book also dementia as, as he later puts it uh, i was young and very very mad but also he goes on if you're not mad until you're 30 then you're a, an imbecile because everyone in his youth has to have some some imbalance some disequilibrium he played the violin like when he was 12 years or something he was passionate about music but he felt that he's not good at playing the violin and he felt that music was not for him even though there was a lot of love for it and from then on as his brother says he dedicated his life to reading and of course to writing i will talk about his uh, notebooks like 1000 pages you can see you can almost travel through books while reading that so at the base it was his uh, regret of not being a musician and then not even poetry was accessible to him, even though his heart was always searching for poems and his prose is very lyrical. So then what, what's left for a man who had this verse inside of him, but he was unable to produce poems? He made poems from his prose. In my darkest times, I went to him for help and he gave me life again. I think if it wasn't for him, I would have killed myself. But the fact that someone else went through my own misery, let's say, through my own sufferings, <sighs> made me feel more connected. And I think this is what we stay alive for, to have this feeling of community, I don't know, of to have this intimacy, to see that another person which is dead for so many years have gone through the exact same suffering you're going through and only by the fact that he was going through the exact same suffering you went through you can be connected with someone if I'm saying uh, if, if I break my hand and I lose my hand you will say oh I understand your pain but you don't you never lost your hand but when you have the exact same problem, then you understand exactly what that person means. Because I never talked to 
Juran and yet I felt so connected with him that I felt more more close to him than with everyone I've ever spoke and you know it's talking back he hears me Joran doesn't hear me it's not a dialogue it's his monologue but I was more present in his monologue than in a discussion with everyone that was alive and this is a miracle of life and I love his passion and it I wouldn't even mention the the humor the the jokes he he's really he's he's making stand up in in a lot of pa passages but the most profound jokes the the jokes of a cultural person let's say the the jokes that the elite can make uh, let's say like the irony of a nietzsche not jokes like hey what's the deal with the past as not, not that kind of joke but in real life he also loved to make jokes everyone who knew him said that he was full of life Eugenio Nesco uh, the renowned playwright also Romanian was his best friend and told him that I cannot believe that a person so happy as you can write so many sad books and then he goes on and uh, writes in his notebooks which we're gonna talk about it's so sad to see how our friends how how little and how little our friends understand us after so many years what expectations should i have of someone else when my best friend understands so little of me he was that kind of person just like me who activates himself when he goes to see someone and then only when he become when he becomes alone when he when he's alone he's again in his natural state of sadness let's say he doesn't burden people with his issues and he always made him laugh and he, he began to think that he was a happy guy actually and probably went home and then through his imagination wrote those sad lines through which a great power emerges. For me, it's filled with vitality. The heights of despair is also the heights of a human being and its capacity of loving. If you look again at the book, it ends with this line. But whom can be uh, capable of such a great love? And he was. The whole book justifies it. He had that capacity of loving like I wouldn't I wouldn't I won't say like no man has ever done it. Nietzsche for me is more profound than him because had this horrible loneliness and suffering I'm dying to talk about Nietzsche. He, for me, is I think he's the alongside Dostoevsky, which Choran also loved. The the his favorite writer was Dostoevsky, and he read Nietzsche like until he died. He was profound, profoundly influenced by Nietzsche. He loved Nietzsche and Dostoevsky. Uh, with Dostoevsky, he he says it clearly, but with Nietzsche, for some reason, he never accepted it probably he's not comfortable that he influenced him so 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 much he almost absorbed him but he always talks about him in his notebooks his recurring thoughts are about Nietzsche 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 it comes back and back and back and he reads him and he reads him how could you not what a wonderful man I don't know German but I read some English and in my Romanian language and I still feel his music he was made to be a saint Joran says it too not a writer he also was afraid he, he was actually afraid of being a saint he says in Ece Homo that I'm writing this book because I'm scared of being <laughs> of becoming a, a saint I don't want people to see me as a saint I'd, I would rather be a clown and think about this, 
every one of us wants to be a saint in some way and we really are clowns and he was a saint who all he wanted to do was to be a normal human being a clown just like the rest of us i will read oh my god i think i spoke too much and i don't even i didn't even reach the five percent of the book and uh, how much it meant to me but it also it has to be said that when he read this book he was profoundly influenced by paul valery i hope i'm pronouncing it right paul valery yes and his uh, obsession with style and you can see throughout the entire book in romanian in original you can feel nobody has ever written in that style until him he set a, a target which now sounds a little too much but for for its time it was whoa he went he he achieved the maximum of every phrase so to speak it was an exclamation point within an exclamation point nobody screamed like that no writer in the in romania screamed like that before him but of course i wouldn't say it's a timeless book other works of his he really goes but it's not less profound but you have to accept it for what it is it's a it's a declaration of love of a very sad young man like when you have a girlfriend and you are very in love and she will take the plane and you are afraid to the death that she will crash that the plane will crash and you will not be with her anymore ever then you can put the same situation but the the girlfriend is life itself and Sharan had this feeling that he will die he was obsessed with death and what this idea does to your life it takes away all of your illu illusions but he was afraid of not being able to love life anymore not just death abstraction death no i'm not gonna be able to listen to music this is a tragedy and to feel life <sighs> so profoundly it's in itself a lesson and you can gather a lot only by this i'm i wanted to to make this as spontaneous as possible and it's kind of a problem because even though i like speaking freely i i talk too much and it's not uh, concentrated but it's also how he would talk about his book i don't think he wanted something like pedantry like scholarly you know like number one Choran does this because by the definition monotonously you know like geeks no he wanted life itself with its misunderstandings his errors its errors so bottom bottom of line on the heights of despair is a declaration of love of a man obsessed with death to talk about death in such a way that you write a declaration of love a love letter to life this this is what on the heights of despair is <sighs> I, uh, I will now re read some passages from his books from his book on the heights of despair if you stayed until here thank you let me know in the comments if you found something too poorly said by me or you have another opinion of, or, sub, or whatever you your thoughts are because i don't know if you're gonna stay longer it, it's it's already like 20 minutes in 
I know the span of attention of people today, so I don't ask for more. So if you are tired, let me know if you liked the video until now. Or what are your thoughts in general, because I'm really interested in the people who watch this and I want to be as close to them as possible. First passage of the book. I don't understand why we, we must do things in the world. What I was talking about, inutility, obsession with death and the inutility of it. The not the inutility, the uselessness of doing everything. The, as, the, as Albert Camus says, the man obsessed with death loses the scale of values. There are no, no, no more values for the man who, is, who accesses a point of consciousness from which you cannot go back. And consciousness is the obsession of Dostoevsky. Charan says it also. He admired Dostoevsky precisely because he was the man who understood the best, who was obsessed with consciousness. And Dostoevsky, a book which are, we're going to talk about, Notes from the Underground, which has an ecranization, a movie a little Americanized, but still with the basic ideas well put. But read the book, of course, read the book. Notes from Underground, Notes from the Underground. That guy is obsessed with consciousness. And later on, Dostoevsky says that he resembled the man in the Underground the most from his works. He resembled that man. Wonderful book. It's one of my favorite books. It's existentialism, despair. He wanted to make a, make it like a red flag for the Russian people to beware. These people exist. Let's let's try to help them in a way. But in reality, it was a confession in a way. I don't understand why we must do things in this world, why we must have friends and aspirations, hopes and dreams. Wouldn't it be better to retreat to a faraway corner of, of the world where all its noise and complications would be heard no more? Then we could renounce culture and ambitions. We would lose everything and gain nothing. For what is there to be gained from this world? Nothing, really. Every, in fact, I will go so far as to say that every act is an illusion in a way. Because you, I, I'm doing this uh, YouTube clip because I think that uh, I'm having in some ways a meaning in life through this. I have a connection with you, you're going to recommend me some movies, it will bring me something, we will have... Uh, a discussion we will really in, enrich ourselves I, I think it is it's gonna be a spiritual communion in a way and it's a it's an illusion really it doesn't matter whether I see the movies you recommend or the books I read the books you recommend or whether you enjoy this or not it really doesn't matter in the end absolutely nothing matters so whatever every step you make towards something to eat, let's say, to drink, even breathing, breathing automatically. It is still, a, in a way, a, an illusion. You should just not even think, I don't even know, that just <laughs> pretend not to be well-being in a way. And the most enlightened of all, who was? Buddha, what did he do? He, what did he do? He read, he ate rice, and smiled. He was in a complete state of meditation. He never did absolutely anything. And he was the most lucid man alive. You wouldn't ask Buddha for a career. You wouldn't ask him to do something. He doesn't even need to read. <sighs> There's absolutely nothing in the most profound way. Attention. It's not, oh, I'm not... I'm not playing video games because life doesn't matter. I hate those people. The bugs that use nihilism in order to be lazy and stink of mediocrity. No. Emil Suran was promoting in a way the lazy life, so-called lazy life, but he was an insomniac. He lived nothingness like no one else. He was in complete despair over the void. 
he wasn't using the void as a way of jerking off and not doing anything. To not be able to sleep because life has no meaning, that really means something. That you can call a, a nihilism lived. Life has no meaning. He deserves to say it. If you stay on Pornhub all your life and just don't do anything because life has no meaning, but you only say it theoretically, but it doesn't affect you, then you're a piece of shit. It's not. It's nothing profound in what you say. You're just using other people's ideologies that they achieved through suffering and use them as an excuse to be a piece of shit. As far as I'm concerned, I resign from humanity. I no longer want to be, nor can still be, a man. What should I do? Work for a social and political system? Make a girl miserable? Hunt. I would make a parenthesis here. You can make love to a woman like a maniac and you can use the fact that life has no meaning to put all your passion in making love, let's say. But he wants to say like, make a girl miserable because life has no meaning, we will never get married, I don't believe in anything. All, all we have is some jokes, um, cynicism as a way of living in a harmonious way, cynicism and making love, kind of all that a nihilist, all of, not nihilist, all of what a man with a higher level of lucidity can do. Make a girl miserable, hunt for weaknesses in philosophical systems. You also never make kids, so you make her miserable. Almost every girl wants to be a mother. Hunt for weaknesses in philosophical systems, fight for moral and aesthetic ideals, it's all too little. I renounce my humanity, even though I may find myself alone. But I am not already alone in this world from which I no longer expect anything. This could easily be a monologue from uh, Notes from Underground of Dostoevsky. Tears do not burn except in solitude. In a way, the most honest Tears are those that happen when we are alone. If I were to be totally sincere, I would say that I do not know why I live and why I do not stop loving. <laughs> why I do not stop living, which is a way of loving. The answer probably lies in the irrational character of life which maintains itself without reason, which is perfectly true. We are so lonely in life that we must ask ourselves if the loneliness of dying is not a symbol of our human existence. True confessions are written with tears only, but my tears would drown the world as my inner fire would reduce it to ashes. He was a man full of himself in his youth. You think of yourself as an universe, a cosmic event. A dynamite, as Nietzsche would uh, talk about himself. And it's wonderful, really. I don't see it as arrogance. In some people, yes, but when you really are beyond what most of the humans are, then it's seductive to feel that way about yourself, that a human being can actually be close to that universe that he's talking about. For me, Nietzsche really is like a whole planet in a way. You can't name me 10 people who are of his level of profundity in a way. Actually, Freud stopped reading him because he was afraid he's going to be swallowed by him. Heidegger was profoundly influenced by him as well but not only him of course we have uh, Hermann Hesse he was insanely influenced he loved him dearly we are so lonely in life oh I said that before how important can it be that I suffer and think 
My presence in this world will disturb a few tranquil lives and will unsettle the unconscious and pleasant naivete of others. Although I feel that my tragedy is the greatest in history, greater than, greater than the fall of em empires, I am nevertheless, and be attention here, aware of my total insignificance. The, the pleasure of thinking of yourself, not pleasure, yes, pleasure, the pleasure of thinking of yourself as being almost God, and then the pleasure of going to the other extreme as a nothing, as a insignificant person to the extreme, to the, the, the most insignificant person, not just an in insignificant person. That's ego right there. Narcissism at its, at, its, at its best. Saints also are, in a way, narcissistic of having, uh, if you read a lot of them, talk badly about themselves is a way in a way narcissistic because it's upside down narcissism you just love talking about you even though you talk about you badly you say those bad things even though you know compare compared to the people around you you are almost a god but you compare yourself to god and then you look like the the last person on earth i'm absolutely persuaded that i'm nothing in this universe Yet I feel that mine is the only real existence. I will make another clip with this book and I will read you more passages because it's getting too long. It's already half an hour or something. I hope you guys like this book. If you did <laughs> not book this clip, I'm uh, tired also a little because it's not my native language. English is not my native language. I hope you understood what I said. And it's uh, you have to put a lot of effort to translate your own thoughts. I hope you guys liked this uh, video. If you did, please consider subscribing. It will help me a lot to see that people are engaging with this. Leave a comment if you like. Uh, I also, I really, I will appreciate if you like this video because it will help it be promoted by YouTube or something and more people will see it. And of course, if you want to support me and help me make more videos like this. I dream of making like $200 a month just making daily YouTube videos with books or movies that I like and come to you with passages or ideas from books that will probably have a good impact and if you take any joy from that, that would be my dream to, to live by giving people the knowledge I take from books and I will live on water and bread but have the opportunity of reading and talking to you like this to live from this would be the ideal life for me I literally won't go out of the house if I manage to do this I will work for you in a way 16 hours a day only reading coming to you with what I gathered like in a prison in a way with less than minimum wage like two hundred dollars a month so if you want to help me go to my patreon account one dollar a month or something it will really help me yes that's it i hope you like this and until next time stay safe and try to read more we need to read more we really fucking need to read more even though I have this feeling that less and less people will read, unfortunately. We will only read newspapers, information, first line. Never even, no, nobody even reads the, whole art, reads the whole article anymore. Interesting times will come. But as long as I live, I hope to give people a taste for reading and a taste for this as Rainer Maria Rilke, a poet I'm gonna talk about when we're gonna discuss letters to a young poet. I really, really, really advise you to read this. It can change your life. Yeah, as Rainer Maria Rilke would say, the only journey is the one within by 
I'm showing now hand to I, here's the library you will not see it but I was looking to say that by the help of the names I have on my shelves I will hopefully give you the instruments for you to have this journey the within journey all right hugs and See you in the next clip.